Last week, of course, as you discovered, we talk about it's okay to be grown and alone. We talked about being single and maximizing your single status because a lot of times people don't realize, especially single folk, that your singleness is an opportunity for you to get closer to God like, like never before. For you to maximize your life to the place that God wants you to maximize your life. And so a lot of people, they feel like, man, I just want to get married. But Paul told the Corinthian church, he said to them, he said, listen, I wish that all of you were single as I am because at the end of the day you can do so much more in your singleness that's not to say that marriage is a bad thing because God himself said that it's not good for a man to be alone but at the end of the day your singleness is a time man where you can do so much more not just for God but for yourself you can go when you want to go you can come when you want to come you ain't got to clock in you ain't got to tell nobody where you at amen let Corey go missing for more than 12 hours or four hours or two hours amen sister Lindsay on that phone. She calling the police. She calling the church. Amen. Everything. Why? Because she trying to figure out where her man gone and vice versa. Am I telling the truth? Amen. And so at the end of the day, when you're single, ain't nobody blowing up your phone asking where you at unless you dating a crazy person. Ain't nobody telling you what time to come home. If you feel like going to the States today, amen, guess what you could do? You could go to the States today. Try doing that while you're married. And so in your singleness, you have the opportunity to do what God wants you to do, to be who God wants you to be. And so last week, I encouraged our sisters. I said, man, instead of trying to focus on a man, get your masters. And instead of focusing on a, a woman, brother, start that business. Do something, amen, that will take your level of living to a next place. So that, watch this, you don't look for somebody to make you complete. Because at the end of the day, you want to be a complete person before you meet a person. Amen. You want somebody to compliment you. Compliment man you to the place of where God's taking you and so the sisters in relevant I don't want you guys and this is why we're doing these messages because for our sisters first of all I don't want y'all to look for a man to take care of you hi I don't want you to have to look for a man amen so that he can help you just raise your children or amen pay the bills go half on the bills I don't want you to just look for a man for the wrong reasons I want you to say to yourself amen I got my own stuff to do what I got to do for myself but the only reason why I want a man if I'm not single and satisfied as we discovered Paul was the reason why I want a man is for the ministry that he could give me for for what God's given to him so that he could help amen me to be who God's called me to be and we'll discover more of that today. Brothers, I don't want you to look for a sister, amen, just to look for her, amen. I want you to look for a woman that can complement the ministry that God's given to you. And so at the end of the day, these messages will help you to realize that God wants what's best for you, but he has you in a place. And, where, and as our rewind said, the place that God has you is the place that God wants you for the season of your life. Somebody, all I know, that's right. So, Pastor, why is this message of dating today so important? Because at the end of the day, everything you do, listen to me, people, amen, and our married folks can, can, can attest to this. Everything you do in your relationship and really in life will be a part of your past. And what you do today also will affect your future. See, when you look back on your life, you don't want to look back and have regrets. And when you look forward, amen, you don't want to be looking forward with regrets. Amen, you want to say that I use my time I use my relationships in a way that brought glory to God and caused my life to be the blessed life that it is now I know a lot of y'all go to church looking for deep messages and a lot of people don't say I ain't that deep so let me try to be deep I could confuse y'all so that when I leave here today and when you leave here today you can say that was confusing boy he's smart and so let me leave you all with a statement that's confusing, that's deep, but really it's powerful, not confusing. It's, it's, it's powerful. Amen. But it's a statement that was made by Andy Stanley. Here's the statement that was made. He said this. Go ahead. He said, your present will be your past, which will be present in your future. That's deep. Some of you are so confused. You are still trying to figure it out. Someone looking at the screen like, huh? Your present will be your past, which will be present in your future. That means, watch this, today will someday be your past. But today, the past will show up in your future. 
And what you do today is what's going to determine how your future looks. We could close the book and go home right there because can I just tell you, a lot of us, we can testify that had we done some stuff differently in our past, our future would have looked a whole lot better than it looked right now. Can I get an amen up inside here? Amen. Some of you, as you look back over your relationships, you wish you had done some things differently. Amen. Some of you up in here saying, Pastor, I could testify. I, I wish I never dated him. I, I wish I never dated her. I wish I never hooked up with them the way I hooked up with them because now what I did in my past affected my present and really it affected my future. See, this is the kind of thing we need to tell our teenagers because what they don't realize is you may be like you're young and you could do whatever you want to do, but listen to me teenagers, listen to me young adults, everything you're doing right now and if our adults would be honest and transparent and some of us can tell you, listen, don't go down that road. Been there, done that, Got the t-shirt to tell you what is next. I'm telling you, for some of us that are divorced, can we look back and say, I wish I didn't do certain things the way I did certain things? And if I could go back, maybe I would change certain things the way I did certain things? Because your present will be your past, which will be present in your future. And so a lot of us, when we look at our dating habits, can I just tell some of y'all, this is a sobering moment for you because right now, maybe you're doing something right now in your present that's going to affect your future in a way that won't bring glory to God. And so a lot of us, if we look at our habits, amen, and it, it, that's affected us and infected us, amen, we would change a whole lot of it. And so this is why this message today is going to be important for you. And now I have to confess, though, as I was looking about dating and I was looking at what the scripture says about dating, and I've done messages like this for this church over and over again. And I said, God, while I may have some of the same content, I need to come in a different way, a way that's more relevant for where they are right now. And so as I looked at it and I was searching through the scriptures y'all wouldn't believe it actually as i searched i could find no specific text that dealt with dating i could find nothing that dealt with dating as i searched and as i looked as i googled there was nothing in the bible now if you can find something in the bible that says dating this is how you date you come and tell me because i would give up the pulpit and let you preach every sunday there was nothing about dating and then as I looked at it even when Paul addressed the relational issues for the Corinthian church he only addressed three individuals if you were paying attention last week amen he only addressed three individuals he addressed the singles he addressed the engaged and he, addre he addressed the married so I said okay what between single and engaged what what is it that amen you would say to us about how to date God's way what what is it and I could find nothing but but there's nothing amen in the scripture about dating because watch this dating is not really something that was in a biblical context and culture there were what we called arranged marriages see you didn't date back though back then your parents chose your spouse <laughs> Let me say it again. Your parents chose who they decided you would marry. This is why Isaac, amen, got Rebecca. Because his father, amen, decided that this is who my daughter is going to marry. And he had some qualifications. Why? Because he knew that this is what, amen, his son needed. And so they would choose their spouse. How much of y'all would let your mommy or daddy choose your spouse right now? Amen. Someone say, not me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you you wait on mommy to choose that duty come limping with one leg <laughs> one eye <laughs> you know you you're looking like mommy now come on now you could do better than that his heart his heart baby look at the heart <laughs> Look at the heart. So so but back in those biblical days, guys, they chose who you would marry. So there wasn't nothing that you had to do with dating because all of a sudden you turn 12 now. This is going to be your wife. <laughs> this is going to be your husband. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. The families got together. They tried to make everything work. They made sure that you two know that this is how it's going to go down. And that was the end of it. And so there's nothing, amen, that speaks to this dating thing because of the culture and the context of scripture. And so, of course, even in our 
our text, our cultural context today, when we think about it as kids, I, I'll go back even to my childhood. You know, there was a song that when it comes to the progression of romantic relationships, amen, from the jump that all of us used to sing as kids, that we heard saying it was uh, something like this, you know, um, uh, let me see what I could pick. Naaman and Brownie sitting in the tree. K-I-I-N. Come on. First came, then came, and then came Brownie with the baby. Dab. <laughs> Brownie having a baby saying, oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> You know, but, but, but think about this. Amen. Even in our songs that we sing as kids, amen, the, the progression of, of relational progression or romantic progression, and it goes to love. Amen. It goes to marriage, and then it goes to baby carriage. See, but the thing about it is, if we looked at it, amen, our relationship progression in that song in itself is vague and incomplete. Amen. And we're left trying to figure out the blank space, amen, between singleness and marriage. And because of this blank space it can get complicated because the truth is if you look at it i don't just walk up to you and say i love you even though that there is love at first sight for some people it's not that way for all of us all the time we don't just walk up to people amen and say i love you enough to just get married to you at least amen so i meant much more have a baby with you now, because we live in a perverse society where that's definitely not the progression in everyone's life, it could actually look like this first. It could be baby. Then because we get a baby, we decide we might as well get married. And then we say, now that we married, I pray to God, he show me how to love you. Come on now, let's be real. Let's relevant, right? Not only that, or, amen, it could look like this, amen, it could be like, okay, well, I, I find them, I fall in love with them, and so because I want them to just think the world of me, here's what I could do to trap them. <laughs> look at somebody say, it's a trap! I'm going to give them a baby. Amen, I'm going to give them a baby, and so, you know, so there's love, then baby, and since, you know, we really can't get along, though, after we have this baby, and we realize that we just can't get along, then just maybe, just maybe, we'll get married, amen, but the truth of the matter is, amen, God never ordained us to go, amen, like this exactly, because there's some things that there should happen in between, and so when we look at it, may, amen, that this dating thing, this whole thing about dating, amen, it's so complicated, and so today, I'm going to try to help you to ask yourself, how do I uncomplicate the in-between, the in-between the singleness and marriage, in fact, if that's the destination, because as we discovered, like I said, last week, there's some of y'all that's single and y'all don't want no man or no woman. How much of y'all say that's me? Let me see who I'm talking to inside here. How much of y'all right now don't need a man or a woman? You're single and you're happy. You ain't, need, you ain't never need, you don't think about sex, you don't do none of that stuff. You ain't, you ain't worrying about that, sister, I get too high up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, all of my people up in here that's single, you satisfied where you're at, but that don't mean you want to stay where you're at. You open that one day God will allow you to get into a great relationship that brings him glory. I want you to just make some noise. Man, y'all is be y'all is be flaming, you know. Cause a lot of y'all right up in here right now, y'all are like, Woo! you ain't want no one see you, but you know you can't wait. <laughs> Scream! If you up inside here and you waiting for God to bring you your Boaz or your root, could y'all make some noise up inside here? There you go. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to talk to some of you, amen, because of course, amen, for those of you that would rather remain single, y'all just hold on to this message in case you change your mind. Amen. But, but, but of course we're going to go, amen, to, to, to the word, even though we would not find the words dating, amen, because of course, even though there may not be anything about dating in the Bible, amen, that doesn't mean the Bible doesn't have anything to say about our relationship one with another. You see, though the Bible doesn't talk directly about dating, it does speak volumes about relationships, godly interactions, and principles that can be applied to how you can date. When applied, it uncomplicates the date. 
So when I follow God's pattern, see, y'all ever watch this thing? I'm a parent, so you know when you're a parent, you have to watch all of the kids' shows. Y'all ever watch Blue's Clues? So Blue would leave clues so that you could find out the answer or you would solve the riddle that Blue, amen, would leave. You see, in Scripture, there are a whole lot of things that we can find. There are a whole lot of clues that we can find that will help us to maximize this area of our lives so that when it comes to this dating in the 21st century, it wouldn't be as, un as complicated, amen, as it is today, but it would be a little bit more uncomplicated when I follow the clues that the Scripture leaves. And so this is what I did this week. I said, God, help me to find the clues that are singles and those that are, are waiting and, da and waiting and even those that may even be dating right now that they could hold on to, to help them uncomplicate this dating thing, amen, in the 21st century. Now, I've got to say that there's different words that people use. Some people use courtship. Some people use dating. In the Bahamas, I think that we use the word date, amen, more than courtship. And I love Dr. Miles Monroe's definition because he says that when you understand the two, amen, a date is an event. But courtship, amen, is an opportunity for you to discover whether or not this person is right. It comes from this thing called the court system where we would sit down in a court. There would be a judge and a jury. And this judge and jury would come to a conclusion as to what the verdict would be at the end of the day. And so when I'm in a dating or a courtship, per se, if we want to use that word, it means then that I'm trying to figure out if this person is right for me. So, Pastor, how do I uncomplicate this thing? I'm glad you asked because first of all, in order to uncomplicate the date, when we look at this, the clues in scripture, the first thing we've got to see is that it's important singles and those of you that are in dating to put God in the middle of it. I know that churchy day. But, but can I tell you, this is going to help you because it's powerful. Here's why I say put God in the middle. Because watch this. I'm going to give you an illustration. Y'all know how I do this thing, right? And so, come on, Brownie. You my beautiful date. All right. Hallelujah. Come on, Brownie. We going on a date? Okay. Look at Brownie. Right here. <laughs> this is an expensive date. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Brownie is a demanding date. You got it? Everything good? so beautiful we going on a date and so me and brownie we and i call him a brownie y'all know this minister brown right so me and brownie on this date now and brownie looking at me in her mind she thinking my goodness he fine <laughs> hi <laughs> and i'm looking at brownie and i'm thinking my 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 mama my my you sure look good tonight 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 all right and so we're here and we're talking and we're dating and at the end of the day i'm looking at her and i'm saying god i love this woman oh yeah you bring the right woman my way and so now because she's saying all of these nice things and i'm saying all of these nice things and we feel like you know what maybe this could work because we got watch this chemistry we got chemistry but watch this it doesn't matter if your chemistry if christ ain't in the middle of it Ooh, that's good, you know. Can I just uh, write that down? If you're taking notes, write that down. Say it doesn't matter about chemistry if Christ ain't in the middle of it. Because watch this. I can tell you, when me and Brownie decide that because of chemistry, we're going to move from the table. And I should have still had the bed. And yeah, we ain't going to go in the bed. But I just said. <laughs> we go in from the table to marriage. And the bedroom represents marriage. Amen. But we go in from the date table to the marriage bed because we decided from this date that we're going to be married because of chemistry. I can tell you when we don't put Christ in the middle from this portion, we can get to the bedroom because of chemistry. And years later, chemistry is going to die. And one day you're going to wake up and you can say, hold on now, God. This don't seem right. Because even though we had chemistry, chemistry don't last always. And so now, here's what I do. Come on, Brownie. We done eat. We done had a good time. Food was good. We go in half. As a matter of fact, I forgot my wallet. You got me? Brownie's a good date. She said, I got you. But even after all of that, even after all of that, watch this. We go ahead and we decide that we're going to get married because of this chemistry. But God was in the... 
So what I do is I put this person in the middle. Watch this. I need three people really quickly. Three people. Y'all don't be shy. Come on. Three people really quickly. Amen. Three, three. Father, come on. Three, three. Son. Holy Spirit. Right? I take this person and I say, God, I like them. I like the way they move. I like the way they smell. I like the way they dress. I like the way they talk. I like the way they walk. Oof. I like them. And so because, because I like them, I say, now, God, here's what I want you to do. I want you, because I chose them, to surround them. Surround this relationship, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But watch this. Here's the, here's surround like a little circle. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. See, we ask God to surround stuff that God may not have necessarily ordained. <laughs> Listen to me. I, I don't know if you're ready for this. Because you're always here when they go to the wedding, to the altar. Who God bless, no one curse. Or what God has joined together, let no man tear asunder. Can I submit to you that a whole lot of stuff and a whole lot of relationships we get ourselves into, God never put together in the first place. Here's the problem. We ask God to surround the mess that we wanted to get ourselves in. And God saying, nah, -uh. the reason why you're going through all the hell you're going through right now is because you did it wrong. What's what you were supposed to do? You were supposed to put God. Come, come, come. You were supposed to put God, y'all just stand right here. In the middle. And you're supposed to say, God, now let everything that I do surround you. Let me say it again. God, let everything that I do surround you. Why? Because if it ain't of you, then I don't want it in my life. Hallelujah. God, if you're not in it, then don't let me stay in it. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. God, if you ain't in it, don't let me stay in it. Singles, this is why I go back to week one. You've got to make sure that you're in the place where you're in God's presence. You're seeking after him. Because watch this. You won't know what God's surrounding unless you know what God is saying. Let me say it again. You won't know what God is surrounding unless you know what God is saying. And so the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. And you say, God, when I move, I'm moving with God. I don't expect God to move with me. I want to move with him. And so God, here's the thing. This ain't the culture and this ain't the time of arranged marriages. Now, some cultures still have it, but we don't live in that culture. Amen. They used to choose their, their children's um, spouses. But God, maybe since you my heavenly father and maybe since you my daddy, here's what I'm going to allow you to do. I'm going to allow you to do the one to do the choosing. Yeah, they may look good on the outside, but here's the thing, God, why I need you to choose them. Because a man only looks on the outside. But God, here's Here's what you do. You are able to look at the inside. See, I may be to this table. Come on, let's go back on the date. Hallelujah. I may be to this table. Hallelujah. And I may be sitting across from my date, and I may say in God, she look good. Oh, my goodness. She may be looking at me saying, boy, he fine like wine. Hallelujah. Let's toast. Thank you, Jesus, because both of us just look real good. Hallelujah. We smelling good. I'm saying all the right things. And so all she's doing is looking at the outside accoutrements. All she's doing is looking at what God I got going on the outside. And I'm looking at what she got going on the outside. But then all of a sudden, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come, and they whisper in your hair and they say guess what this person may look good on the outside but boy she got some ways about her boy she got some ways about him and guess what thank you father son and holy spirit guess what when i leave this table now i should be in a position where i've been in god's presence i'm been following god to the place that when I leave this table, I understand whether or not this person and I need to take this thing any further. Why? Because at the end of the day, and I'm not just talking now about on the first thing. Now, some of y'all are so holy and y'all in God's presence. Y'all in Eden. Y'all can hear when God whisper. So, uh, and I'm not being sarcastic. I'm being serious. You could hear when God whisper. So, you don't need a second date. But maybe on the fourth date. 
Maybe on the fifth day, God will speak to you and say, now I know you've been looking at the outside, but here's what I wanted you to do. Look at the heart. And can I just tell you, God will start to show you the heart of people. Something's going to happen. Come on now. Am I telling the truth? See, something's going to happen. Watch this. God's going to leave some blue as clues. Because on my fourth day, now I know something about her. She noticed something about me. And there's something on the inside saying, boy, I know. I just don't feel too right about this. And so here's the thing. Because we're lonely and we want company, I'm so lonely, so very lonely. I need somebody to call my own. Do, 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 do. I ignore all of the clues. And I say, don't worry, I can change that. <laughs> Hi. Come on, am I being real? Come on, I can, let me talk to my sisters, because y'all, y'all, welcome to Relevant, baby. Welcome to Relevant. Can I just tell some of my sisters? See, the problem is, we believe we could change a man. I got in ahead of myself. I was going to save this point for the last point, but I feel in this right now. See, we believe we could change a man, but can I give you all some more deep stuff? See, you can't change a man. See, because God created men to be a cultivator while he created you to be a nurturer. See, what does that mean? See, men are to be the cultivators. A man is supposed to be someone that the word cultivate means to bring the best out of something or to produce or to cause progress. The word cultivate means to take something, amen, from nothing and cause there to be something that comes up, amen, that is worthwhile. And a lot of times, amen, we look for men and we believe that they're cultivators, but they're not cultivators because they ain't cultivating themselves. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> They, they cultivate themselves because they're looking for a woman to take care of them. i doing the best I can. Up in here. Up in here. You okay on that date? Okay. i sitting here and i telling her now we on the date. I tell him, Brownie, I say, him, Brownie, I ain't going to lie to you. This is our fifth day. Let me just come real with you. You know, things been hard for me for the last couple years. I just, these days, the system out there, the system mess up, man. Babylon system out there, you know. See, because they don't want a man like me to progress. So I've been in between jobs for like the last two years. But don't worry, I got potential, you know. Got plenty of potential. And here's what you do. <laughs> you marry her for potential and I tell her no, and right now I live in with my mommy right <laughs> but you want me to tell you what that man that man's woman love me my mommy don't even want to let me go <laughs> my mommy want me to stay to take care of her but don't worry if, if me and you get together I can tell the old lady I just can move in with you for a little bit <laughs> Now, these ain't just blue as clueless. <laughs> this, this plaster across the screen. Run! <laughs> but, but guess what? Because I'm lonely, I feel it in myself. You know what? I could, I could cause this man to be great, you know. I, I, I could get him a job. I'll call a couple of my friends. But when I get him the job, I realize now why he can't keep a job. Brothers, I ain't going to leave us out, you know. I'm talking vice versa because here's the thing. Women should not just look for men who are cultivators, who are cultivating themselves because at the end of the day, the ministry that that man's going to have is to cultivate and bring the best out of you. And if he ain't in God's presence and if he ain't the type of man that cultivating himself, amen, first in a spiritual way, he is no and no way going to be able to cultivate you. But brothers, here's the thing. You should look for a woman who's a nurturer. See, because watch this, that means when a man cultivates something and he produces it and he brings it to the table, this woman should be to the place where she could watch this, take something and she could make, I mean, she could take nothing and she could make something out of it. Okay, watch this, here's what I mean. As a woman, if I give you a seed, you're going to produce a baby because you're a nurturer. If I give you groceries, boy, I ain't going to lie, you're going to produce a meal. Because you're a nurturer. If I give you a house, you're going to make that house 
a home because you're a nurturer. Hallelujah. And brothers, here's the problem. Amen. We're looking for people and sisters that don't know how to nurture. Because you're sitting to the table now and she's telling you, you know what? I don't really cook like that. This is the 21st century. And you're saying to yourself, that's okay, man. We could just go out all week. Then she could say, you know what? I just need a maid. Because I don't wash. I don't do that kind of stuff. You know, I don't do none of that stuff. Like, you know, and unfortunately, I ain't talking about our sisters in, in Brownie, those generation, because can I tell you, these women in her generation know how to do their thing. That's why some of us brothers, and no pun intended, and this just happened to say this truth, that's why some of us brothers love when our mommy visit, right? Uh, why, why? Because at the end of the day, mom going to cook, boy. Mom going to make sure things straight. Amen? See, because at the end of the day, women in her generation, but these sisters today, they just won't get nails done, hair done. They won't floss for Facebook and Instagram. They won't just look good. Amen. Let me tell you, some of these sisters, they can look good. See, I sit to the table and she look good, but she can't nurture. Because while she dressed good, you go in her house today. Preach. Hi. Nasty. Nasty, why? Because all they good for is to show what's on the outside. See, but can they cultivate and can they nurture? The only way I gonna notice, I'm telling y'all, is if I'm in God's presence, Amen. And I don't ask God to surround. Uh, I don't ask God to surround it, but I say, God, let everything that I do surround you. Come on, let's give it up for my day. Come on, let's give it up for my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Hallelujah. Somebody shall put God in the middle. Come on, I need y'all to hold out your boys. They put God in the middle. You got to put God in the middle of that thing. Amen. So not every relationship God put together. Can we go to the scripture for that point? Go back to the point. Amen. First Corinthians 10 verse 31. Watch what it says. Well, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink or date, whatever you do, whatever you do. Do it all for what? God's glory. God, I want you to be glorified in every aspect of my relationships. Now, that's not to say, amen, that you don't say, God, let them look good. Let them smell good. You want that. Hi. I know. See, y'all is going in these little bubbles. As long as they got Jesus. She don't look the way you want them to look. And I, I've, heard, I've heard Dr. Vernon say it like this. He says a lot of times, amen, you around here talking about, I like a woman with a big chest or, you know, big butt. And then all of a sudden you marry a woman just because you was lonely and you was desperate. She ain't got the chest that you like. She ain't got the butt that you like. But she got Jesus. She got Jesus though. This real stuff. But then years later now, you turn over and you saying, Pastor, the reason why I cheating and the reason why I can't stay is because she ain't got the chest negro. She didn't have it when you married her. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, the reason why I ain't really into him no more because he ain't got that six pack like I want. Sister, he had a keg when you met him. <laughs> Come on now. So that's not to say that you throw your standards out the, out the window. But it is to say that you don't be shallow and stop to the surface. It is to say that God, I want them to have, amen, your spirit. I want them to be able to give me ministry. Why? Because I want everything that I do, amen, to be arranged by you. Hallelujah. Amen. I want, watch this, everything that I do. I want my marriage to be God ordained. And so that's why I need my dates to be God arranged. That's good. I want my marriage to be God ordained. So I need my dating life to be God arranged. God, you bring them my way. Somebody say he teaching good. Come on. Yeah. So, uh, of course, amen. The Bible tells us this, that he, amen, that finds a wife, finds a good thing. And we know that. And we're going to discover that. But, but, but remember, God should be in the middle of it. Number two. And I'm going to hurry up. Number two. Remember, nobody's perfect. So while you say saying, God, let this be the man or the woman you want have for me, here's what I want you to know. 
that if you want to complicate the gate date after we don't put God in the middle after we say God surround us that doesn't mean that you're going to find the perfect person see because here's what the scripture says here's what the Bible says about people for all have and fallen one of God's glory but it doesn't stop there because here's Psalms 38 verse 5 here's what David said go here's what David says he says my wounds are foul and festering because of my what David says man I do some foolish stuff I'm not altogether perfect I, I got I got some like I, I got I do some foolish stuff so much so that it stinks sometimes how much y'all got some stink attitude stink ways you ain't got to wave your hand. I know some of y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. You, why? Because at the end of the day, amen, and you know, the truth of the matter is nobody perfect. Nobody's perfect. See, they have all turned, Sam says, they have all who? They have who? All turned what? They have together become what? Corrupt. There is none who does what? How much? No, not what? No, not one. So now, okay, let me, let me be practical to you now while this was spiritual. Let me help you to come to a practical understanding that while God's going to surround this thing, remember, you are not going to find the perfect person. I was reading the Huffington Post, and when it came to dating, here's what they said. They said that the current observation of dating has become much easier due to the rise in the dating sites such as Tinder. How much of y'all got a Tinder account? Don't raise your hand. Bumble and Hinge. <laughs> Oh Jesus, if I could give you if y'all was up here <laughs> and see some of your faces, y'all give yourself away. <laughs> you know, they said the rise of these dating accounts such as Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge, yet extremely um, have arise and made dating easier, yet it has become extremely complicated at the same time. See, because according to this article in Huffington Post, millennials tend to judge one another and come to conclusions immediately while they're searching for the perfect person. So after one date, they said that instead of taking time to now get to know the individual, they move on almost immediately because the access and the promise of finding the perfect match. So as a result of all of these dating sites, the observation is in fact that commitment is more difficult to come by because here's the thing. We live in a paradox of choice. That means I got a lot of options. And so because I feel like I get a lot of options, I don't stay in one place long enough. Amen. To allow God to speak to me or to allow God to show me some stuff because I move it from person to person to person. How much of you all ever see somebody and they tell you I dating someone and then three weeks later they dating the next person and you trying to figure out how much people these people have date <laughs> and so they moving from one place to the next now there's nothing wrong with having a uh, the ability to have a choice amen see it's the paradox of choice says the more we have to choose from the more difficult making a choice becomes sisters when y'all go into the store right and you're looking for the perfect dress and they get a whole lot of stuff why y'all think y'all have spent hours up in that store? And the dude you with frustrated out of this world. And they say, this woman ain't going to come out this story. So much to choose from. And the reason why a lot of y'all still single and the thing is complicated is because maybe there's that paradox of choice where you're looking for the perfect person. And so here's the thing. The perfect person doesn't exist. Your side, hey. See, the perfect person doesn't e get, exist. See, the reason why you got a body count as though you was in a war zone. Why body counts high? <laughs> like you was in a war zone? And, and see, the reason why this is important, everybody, is because if you keep looking for perfect, then you're going to find yourself in an imperfect place. If you keep looking for perfect, I'm telling you, you're going to find yourself in a place whereas you're going to have so much people that's connected to you that you can feel like you're going, to, you're going crazy. You could be depressed. Amen. Because the perfect person don't exist. So here's what's the option. So what's, what do I do, Pastor? Because you just discouraged me. You were so good in that first point, Jesus. Now you just come down and destroy all my hopes. 
Here's what to do. It's up there. See, don't focus then on the perfect person. Ask God to send you the right person. See, because watch this. The right person is the one who may not be perfect, but they're right for me. See, their imperfections are perfectly perfect for me. You know, J. Cole, he that song. He says, nobody's perfect now. Nobody's perfect now. But you're perfect for me. Nobody's perfect. See, you may not like how they look, but boy, I love how they look. You may not like how they speak, but there's something about when they open up their mouth and speak that it's right for me. So I may not like this person for you, and you may not like this person for me, and they may not be perfect in your eyes, but they are right for me. If you're sitting next to your wife or your husband, just say, you're right for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look backward. Some of y'all are scared, eh? <laughs> Some say, Jesus, pastor, you should have you told me the first point <laughs> before I get married. <laughs> but here's the thing here's the thing I can't just leave you here I can't leave you here because see it's not just about finding the right person here's the big thing it's about being the right person come on put your hands together for that because you can't tell God to send you what you ain't. Let me say it again. You can't tell God send you what you ain't. So while I want somebody that out of debt, I can't go to them carry that. <laughs> Y'all wanted to hear three points in a poem. Y'all instead of so so if I want somebody that's shapely, in shape, they working out. You can't go to them, amen, with your keg. <laughs> if I want somebody that's in the presence of God, put God first. <laughs> if I want somebody that know the word, see, y'all focus on finding right instead of being right. Look at somebody say, I'm going to be right, baby. Come on. See, that's why. See, when I'm right, then wrong can't come around me. I, let, me just sh let me shut the book. They're ready for this. I should write a book for this, right? Because, see, when I'm right, wrong can't come my way. See, the reason why a lot of y'all, don't be depressed, sisters. Don't be depressed. Because the brothers ain't hollering the way that you want them to holler. See, because, see, brothers know who to holler at. A certain caliber of brothers now, some of them bull. Some of them bull. See, because they ain't focusing on being right, they're focusing on finding right. So they'll come up to you. But watch this. A lot of times men don't approach a sister that got class, that carry herself a certain way. They would approach a sister that seemed to have no standard because it's easier. See, but when I'm right, and when I'm starting to walk right and talk right and act right and live right, then wrong can't come my way because wrong will get frustrated with me. Because when wrong want to do something wrong and I live in right, see right, going to tell wrong, that's wrong. And if loving you is wrong, I'm going to stay wrong. <laughs> see some of you talking, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. No, I stay in right. You can stay wrong as long as you want to stay wrong, but I'm going to be the right person. So before God sends you, right, what you got to do? Be right. Look at your neighbor and say, are you being right? How much of you are being blessed by this? I'm almost done. How much of you are being blessed by this today? Number three. Oh, this is a good one. Jesus is about to get hot. Up in here, up in here. Remember, dating is not a destination. It's transportation. I'm going I'm to I'm break it down. Somebody say, make it plain, Pastor. Watch what Proverbs 28, verse eight, 18, verse 22 says. He who what? Finds her. And obtains what? 
favor from the Lord. So here's what I mean. See, you find people that go in this dating thing, and you ask them, watch this, how long you been dating? 15 years? <laughs> Seven years? See, because here's what the problem was. This became their destination. Rather, whew, than transportation to the altar. So when this is the destination, I start living as though I'm already here. And because I live in like I'm already here, here, I don't need to go here. And you around here saying, Pastor, you just see you and marry me. I know what's wrong. Well, what they used to say in the old days, the boy ain't gonna buy a cow if he getting the milk free. <laughs> what I need to marry you for if I getting everything I get in here. See, when I was when I was travel, I I get in, <laughs> I've been traveling a lot, and I go to certain airports. And some of you that travel a lot, you go to certain off and, and, and you come off the thing and you have this thing they call trams right and so the trams when you come off the plane the trams will take you to your next gate because where you are is not your final destination you got to get on the tram but the tram is nothing that you're going to stay on that's why those trams ain't comfortable as a matter of fact they have it where you could just stand up and hold on and they only get like four little did you they get them lists that only three people could sit on the seat why? Because they understood that this tram is nothing for you to get comfortable in. This tram is just to take you to the next gate. See, what happened is we make here too comfortable. Rather than saying this is a purposeful meeting. Right here is what we call the courting time. That don't mean I want to marry you on the first date. But what it does mean is that I am purposeful in my dating. And I'm going to find out whether or not you could become a husband or a wife. I promise you guys that if you allow your dating to be destination rather than transportation, you're going to be frustrated because watch what God says in his word. He says, when it comes to me and you, he says, I know, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know what the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So if God got plans for us, and he says, watch this, write your vision now, make it plain, so that he that re read of it could run with it. In other words, he's saying, you got to have some plans for yourself. And so if I'm living a life that God wants me to live with a vision, with a plan, then that means whoever I get in a date with or in a relationship with, they got to have a plan. And so here's how I don't make this a destination with transportation. I would uh, said in the skit last week, you say it, Anne. What did you say? Oh, click, click, click. Hallelujah. <laughs> click link. <laughs> See, because watch this, I'm telling y'all, and, and I know these, these, these messages get uncomfortable, but you got to make it uncomfortable because I don't want that to just be your destination. See, you got you to stop giving them certain things so that, watch this, they could realize the value. You ain't gonna get it until you wear it. <laughs> oh, I got it. I get a next one. <laughs> you ain't gonna get it until you wear it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because dating is what's this not a destination, it is transportation. That's why recreational dating could be dangerous. Uh, I just going on a date because I'm lonely. It's Valentine, Pastor. Hi. Recreational dating could be dangerous. That's why I say I ask God to surround it. And so how do I do that? Don't involve sex. First Corinthians 6 verse 18. Amen. Do we have that up there? Here's the thing. Don't, have, don't involve sex because here's what First Corinthians 6 verse 18 says. Flee what? Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual morality sins against his own body. <laughs> I told you all this was rated relevant, right? But I'll say it because, you know, sometimes you just got to be real. But, but, but when you understand this, man, I'm telling you, when you involve sex, you tie yourself down even before you should tie yourself down. I did, someone said it like this, and they were real. They say the nut ain't worth the nonsense. 
Y'all gonna catch that when y'all go home. <laughs> Look at your neighbor say this relevant kingdom center. I telling y'all now this is relevant kingdom center. He says, or do you not know? Everybody say, don't you know? That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am valuable. I'm not just going to be a one night stand. You're not going to have me for 15 years. Amen. Make the child in puberty and you ain't married me yet. We've been dating for 15. That don't make no sense. You don't date for 15 years. Because it's not a destination. It's transportation. Home you have for God from God, and you are not what? I don't belong to myself. Why is this different from the world's culture? Because I don't belong to myself. The world tell y'all 90 days. If you Google how long should I wait before I involve sexual intim intimacy, they would literally the first result that came up was do what you want. So what if you have it on the first date? Because here's what they tell you. You got to try on the shoe before you buy it. And that's what happened. Y'all been trying on too much shoes. So what? Now, the reason why I allowing them in my life for 15 years because I can't see them to break free. God telling you this is wrong. But you rather stay wrong rather than be right because now I made dating the destination rather than the transportation. Look at somebody say there's a purpose to this. So if you got to carry, what I tell you all every time I talk about dating, what I tell you all do investigative dating, right? So that means if you got to carry your list, don't do it on the first day. Maybe on the second day. Let's play that music so we can wind down. Hallelujah. Don't do it on the first day. Do it on the second day. <laughs> you ain't want to scare them. Scare your list. Do you get a job? <laughs> you know, how many people that you've been with? I, I, I want to know. You ain't got to go into details, but I need to know. You know, what is your philosophy on, on worship and prayer? What kind, of, what kind of environment did you grow up in as a child? Did you have both parents? See, what am I doing? I'm being purposeful because at the end of the day, this thing ain't a destination. This is transportation. I want to make sure I want to get on this trans. And so, be purposeful. Don't have sex if you don't want this to be a destination in dating. And don't move in together. Let him keep his toothbrush to his house. Let her stay in her place. Because this ain't the destination. You don't get this privilege right now. Because I belong to him. My life ain't my own. I don't care what they say in the world. I got to know what it says in the word. Because I don't belong to myself. And I refuse to allow myself to live beneath the privilege that I should live as a king and as a queen. As a child of the most high God. And so, one, put God in the middle. Two, remember that no one's perfect. But that doesn't mean you can't find the one that's right. Three, don't make that dating the destination. This will uncomplicate this thing. Make it the transportation. Be purposeful. So if me and you go out on a date and we decide that we ain't supposed to be together, that's okay. That's, that's fine. Because I'd rather figure that out there than figure it out after here. So God, leave as much clues as you need help me to be in your presence because here's the last point then with all of that to really uncomplicate this thing remember that guard your heart we get back to our main text because I'm a preacher I had to get this cat back here right keep your heart 
to fall anyone to get to my heart can I tell you they got to get through my God I'm promising you because I can't keep this thing by myself because the minute I see they smell the way I want them to smell and look the way I want them to look I hand them into them quick but God I need you to help me to keep my heart because watch this everything that happens in my life starts to flow from my heart how am I going to keep my heart? I'm going to make sure me and this person head to the same destination because with fellowship, does light have with darkness? Go ahead. Go to the next screen. Amen. What, I, I got to make sure I'm going to keep my heart because watch this. I'm not going to walk with people if we ain't agreeing. Can two walk together unless they agree? He who walks with the wise will be wise. But watch this. The minute I let someone in my heart, they have the ability to destroy me. If you look back on your relationship pattern, a lot of the destructive things that are happening in your life, it was because of who you allowed in your heart. I'm done, but watch this. I was listening to Chris Brown and you know, everyone think Chris Brown is supposed to be the next Michael Jackson, incredible young man growing up doing his thing. Great artist for the young people. I mean, and you know, Chris Brown, but you remember that one period in time and he said this out of his own mouth and I'm showing you how someone from the world showed this principle not someone in church this someone from the world this is in Chris Brown's latest interview that just came out last year here's what he said in this interview out of his own mouth he said when Rihanna and I got into a relationship he said it was it only took one night one bad decision on our behalf that changed the course of my life and my career he said that one moment because Rihanna and I were together and we knew that this shouldn't have been what we supposed to be doing he said that one moment changed the course and the direction of my life and if he could have gone back he would have changed everything about that moment see in life we don't get much do-overs we don't get to go back so what you got to do now guard your heart today because at the end of the day go ahead we go back to that confusing point your present will be your past which will be present in your future remember put God in the middle remember Dating ain't the destination, so don't act like it. It's only transportation. Remember, remember to guard your heart. Remember to guard your heart. Because what you do in your present will become your past, which will be your, which will be present in your future. Here's my bottom line. I'm done. Here's my bottom line. When we follow God's blueprint, we are able to guard our hearts and uncomplicate the date. If you were blessed, put your hands together.